Leo Pluridon, the Jaws of Jurassic. When we think of the most deadly aquatic animals, the first thing that usually comes to mind is sharks. But sharks are far from being the most deadly marine animal if we return to the Jurassic era. The Jurassic is an era notorious for its mysterious creatures, from land to marine creatures. One of the notorious marine animals in this era is Leo Pluridon, the most ferocious and biggest of its species ever to live. Just how terrifying is this creature? Stick around to find out. Leo Pluridon is a species of massive carnivorous reptiles that lived from the middle to late Jurassic era, about 160 million years ago, in a prehistoric sea that occupied most of present-day Europe. Although this massive creature coexisted with dinosaurs, it wasn't one. It is a mammal reptile that belonged to the Pliosauria order. The ancient order of marine reptiles has been grouped into two by scientists, Pliosaurs and Pliosaurs. The Leopluridon belonged to the former group. Like other Pliosaurs, it had a long head, a short neck, and a thick torso with long flippers. This is different from the Plesiosaurs, short torsos, and extraordinarily long necks. Leopluridon is a popular species in the field of paleontology. French paleontologist Henri Sauvage named it in 1873 after discovering its three-inch long teeth fossils near orléans sur mer France. He found the fossils in rock layers stemming back from the Jurassic era. The species was given the name Leopluridon ferox. Later, they found another tooth fossil about 2.8 inches long in Chauly, France. It was named Leopluridon grossover. The third was discovered near Caen, France, which was named Leopluridon buckland. Thus, Henri not only discovered a new genus, but also discovered three species of it. However, Sauvage was working with non-credible material, basing his discovery on a tooth, and as skulls, necks, and other fossils emerged throughout the year, it became evident that Henri's original assertion of the three species was incorrect, and only one species remained correct at the end, the Leopluridon ferox. Presently, there are three recognized species of Leopluridon, while L. ferox from the Colovian of England and France is well known, there are also the less common pachyderms from the same period in England, which Seely described as a Pliosaurus in 1869. L. rosicis comes from the Russian Volgian people. This species was first described by Novozhilov in 1948 as a member of the Pliosaurus clade and is the type species of the genus Strongelocroptophus. Only L. ferox is known for more or less complete skeletons. Leopluridon remained unknown until 1999, when it was depicted in Episode 3 of the BBC show Walking with Dinosaurs. In the TV show, the creature bears only a general resemblance to the real animal. Firstly, there is the ridiculous size. The Leopluridon depicted in the movie was a 25-meter or 80-foot-long monster, a truly enormous size. This inflated size was this inflated size was based upon a fragmented specimen found in Mexico that was identified as belonging to a Leopluridon and believed to be a gigantic individual. Although this evidence was flimsy, the show's creators used this as a cue to expand Leopluridon's size to ludicrous proportions, claiming that it was the largest sea reptile that had ever lived. Secondly, the head was in the wrong shape, with it being given a considerably curvier high-arched skull. In reality, the skull was much smaller and flatter. Thirdly, the body measurements were off. The episode claimed that Leopluridon had a head that was one-fourth of its body size, yet, according to a 2003 article, it was most likely that the creature's head was just half as long as the rest of its body. This would have given the impression that its head was smaller than its body. This depiction generated various questions and speculations regarding the creature's size, as the movie estimate sounds dubious. Later on, more reasonable estimates were made, but they still needed to be made more reliable due to the lack of fossil evidence. Nevertheless, they are still more thinkable than the original assumption. One such is the notion of paleontologist L. B. Tarlow. He derived that a pleosaur, including Leopluridon, total body length can be inferred from its skull length because the skull makes up roughly one-seventh of the entire body. According to Tarlow's calculations, the L. ferox skull, the largest known skull at 1.5 meters long, would have been about 11 meters, 38 feet long. Tarlow's estimates may be accurate, however, there is some doubt. 
Subsequent research on pleosaurs has challenged Tarlow's estimates and revealed that the heads of these animals were only around one-fifth as long as the rest of their bodies. Therefore, the L. ferox would have been an average of 7 to 10 meters, 33 to 35 feet long. Pleosaur remains excavated from the Kimmeridge Clay Formation of England suggest the existence of a considerably larger taxon, possibly reaching a length of 15 meters, 49.2 feet. However, they have not been identified as belonging to Leopluridon. Once categorized as Leopluridon macromerus, a mandible on exhibit in the Oxford University Museum of Natural History measures over 3 meters. The mandible was previously attributed to Stratosaurus when it was first described as Stratosaurus macromerus. The genus Stratosaurus later became a junior synonym of Leopluridon, but it is now known as Pleosaurus macromerus. More recently, however, Paleontologists have once again reduced the number because a better specimen was found, giving scientists a better idea of the size of this creature. The specimen was about 6.39 meters, or 21 feet long. Based on his head-to-body ratio, the paleontologist calculated the size of other Leopluridon whose skeletons weren't complete and noted that the largest would have been about 7.5 meters, or 25 feet long. While this is considerably smaller than the massive representation seen in Walking with Dinosaurs, the new size still makes the Leopluridon larger than great white sharks. Even larger individuals will outsize the largest great white ever recorded. And since only a handful of the fossils of this creature have been discovered, some people believe that there are still larger sizes out there. Also, the Leopluridon belongs to a class of pleosaurs known as the Lassophonia, the Greek word for sea murderers. It weighs about 2.5 tons. To put it into perspective, the average car weighs 1.55 tons, making them quite imposing. Aside from their massive head, another feature of Leopluridon is their strong paddle-like limbs. This four-flipper propulsion was characteristic of all pleosaurs. They were all powerful swimmers, with the floppers giving them impressive acceleration. Studies on the floppers and their presumed swimming size further reveal that although the Leopluridon has been great at covering long distances quickly, it would have been a bolt of lightning in a short distance, which led paleontologists to believe that he hunted his prey by ambushing them. But another feature also helps this creature in this regard is its sense of smell. On the Leopluridon's massive head were two highly specialized nostrils, which allowed it to smell food kilometers away, which it would attack with its mouth. Their nostrils on the snout are arranged to enable them to taste the water, probably especially after fresh kills when there is blood in the water. The third weapon possessed by Leopluridon is its mouth. With Leopluridon's massive skull, it's evident that it had a strong jaw and a stronger bite. It could easily have held a medium-sized car in its mouth and bitten it in half. Although no credible research has been done to ascertain this strong bite, it surely possesses some features which glaringly back this up. The first evidence is that its teeth were deeply rooted in its mouth, allowing them to endure much damage and pressure while biting down. Furthermore, the teeth were wide, smooth, and slightly curved, with some cutting edges ideal for piercing through flesh and bone, making the Leopluridon capable of attacking almost anything. As a result, it had a varied diet. The Leopluridon diet consisted of prehistoric marine reptiles like the Chimersaurus, Ithiosaurus, and other Plesiosaurs, and fish. Despite clearly liking the big game, the Leopluridon probably ate anything it could catch, including smaller marine animals. Because of the number of animal fossils found alongside its remains, paleontologists believe its food list is extensive. However, given the large size of the Leopluridon, it's uncertain if it would have had any natural enemies big enough to take it on except members of its clod. As mentioned earlier, Leopluridon lived in a shallow body of water in Europe, mostly concentrated in Germany, England, and France. At that time, there was a thriving population of pleosaurs and plesiosaurs. Leopluridon lived underwater, but unlike many other marine reptiles of the time, they lacked gills. This implies that, like modern aquatic mammals like whales, they occasionally had to break the surface to breathe. According to biblical studies, Leopluridon survived the great floods described in Noah's Ark and then later died off of environmental change. But in evolutionist view, despite being apex predators in their time, Leopluridon eventually lost their dominance at the beginning of the Cretaceous period 
about 150 million years ago. The advent of the Mosasars, a group of vicious and better adapted marine reptiles, threatened the dominance of the Plesiosaurs and Pleosaurs. With time, they outdo Leopleurodon and their close cousins. By the time the Cretaceous tertiary extinction happened about 65 million years ago, they had all but disappeared. If you have reached this far, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you may not miss any future updates. See you in another video. Until then, take care. Do tell us your views in the comments section.